what was your takeaway from what Jay Powell had to say? There's certainly there was a little bit of a broadside regarding the fiscal side of things. Well, I think um, it's beholden on him and incumbent on him to uh, be supportive, uh, to be constructive uh, and try and calm the water somewhat, which I believe he did. Um, uh, uh, absolutely, in the near term, the U.S. economy does face some challenges. Um, the tra trajectory of the very sharp V-shaped rebound that we saw in the third quarter um, of this year is, is clearly uh, moderating somewhat. Um, and as we head into the first half of next year, um, unless there's a meaningful turnaround, uh, by, by which I mean um, uh, expectations of a, of a vaccine or evidence of a vaccine, I think that uh, the trajectory of the U.S. economy is likely to uh, slow down. And I think that was really the key message that uh, Powell was trying to make, being willing to provide and do whatever it takes uh, in order to su support uh, the uh, underlying growth story. Does ultimately what's happening with these various states which haven't delivered their results yet perhaps uh, add to some of the bullishness out there? Because it, it may mean ultimately that we are in a situation where, you know, neither side is one. So actually at the same time might stymie or should I say limit some of the more radical elements of uh, either uh, candidate. You know, Rich, that's, that's precisely the reading I'm uh, having right now. I think a Biden presidency and a divided house represent the best of both worlds. It's win-win, I think. And certainly, I believe the markets have already made up their mind. A centrist uh, government or a center-left government, albeit one unable to roll back Trump-era cuts and perhaps more importantly, uh, unable to uh, hike uh, taxes um, is the best of both worlds, I think, for uh, markets. Uh, and as such, you know, we are seeing, particularly in emerging markets, um, a quite extraordinary rebound. Uh, John, you talked about how the Fed was looking to calm markets, but the market has been calm. In fact, the market has been happy. We're, we've seen a rally over the last few days. Uh, is this a tide that will lift all boats, not just tech? Again, it's a very good question. Um, I absolutely think that some of the... Uh, uh, more positive expectations um, surrounding a so-called uh, uh, blue wave need to be repriced, and in particular, a $3 trillion stimulus package. And by the way, that's precisely what the uh, bond market is doing right now. Um, I think from an equity market perspective, ever the optimists, uh, the rally that we're seeing is possibly a pricing out of the political risk associated with the election. I mean, let's face it, we've all been very focused on this election over the last three months, and uh, uh, the risk premium has ramped up somewhat. But um, to the extent it appears um, over by the shouting, um, there has been um, a, a rally, a subsequent and commensurate uh, rally. Um, I think in a lower growth environment, uh, the, uh, growth will, um, will outperform, uh, by which I mean tech will outperform. Um, and I think more broadly that also um, positively under supports uh, tech in North Asia as well. I mean, South Korea, Taiwan, uh, and China. And indeed, uh, I believe that's why we are seeing something of a rally. Also in a low growth environment, the dollar will continue to weaken, in our view. Uh, and as we all know, a weaker dollar tends to support um, Asian equities through the inflow of capital as, uh, as investors seek uh, growth and earnings abroad. Um, and finally, a Biden administration, um, I think, is, is likely to be a little more conciliatory, is likely to be a little more predictable, is likely to be a little more, um, uh, I think, uh, um, positive towards, uh, at least in, the, in form, um, in terms of trade and investment uh, relations with uh, China. Uh, and I think that's one of the reasons why probably foreign investors have been a little bit concerned about investing in this part of the world. You know, 42 billion U.S. dollars have been withdrawn uh, from Asian equities year to date. And I, and I suspect that is likely to reverse uh, in, the second, in the first half of uh, next year, right. 2021. As, as this environment starts to gain traction and the, and the, and the investment opportunities appeal. Right. Uh, uh, John, prior to the election, money was sitting on the sidelines, and a lot of investors say they're waiting for clarity. 
Is there enough clarity now for funds, for money to be deployed? Well, as, as you ask this question, I'm looking at the MSCI Asia uh, X Japan, which I notice a couple of ticks away from an all-time high. So at least in our part of the world, there does seem to be um, a positive uh, uh, shift towards um, equity risk. Uh, I also note that um, the Nikkei 225 is, is, a, is a heartbeat from um, a 30-year high. So, so around Asia, uh, I think um, cash is being put to work um, on the back of the positives that we can derive from this election. You know, at Credit Suisse, we went into the election um, with a neutral uh, equity bias as well. I mean, there were a lot of uncertainties that we were concerned yeah. about, uh, not, least, not least geopolitical risk and valuations. Uh, that may change um, once we've had our um, investment committee meetings and John. discuss the outcome. John, very, very quickly here. Yeah. Uh, has the uh, pulling of the anti-IPO changed your view market-wise uh, about uh, Chinese equities? Well, I think it certainly hiked the regulatory risk premium that um, hitherto didn't really exist uh, to, in any meaningful way. I mean, I have to say it did come as a surprise to the market. Um, and I guess uh, subsequent uh, fundraising exercises now need to have that as a potential risk and concern. I mean, at a global level and more broadly, uh, fintech has a powerful disruptive uh, impact on um, established traditional uh, banking uh, banking infrastructure and systems. And, and uh, you know, c clearly there was a step too far, perhaps, um, in as much as this particular capital raising was pulled. But no, uh, to, to answer your question, uh, Rishi, no, I'm still pretty positive on China's equity story, driven by earnings upgrades.